Another huge storm is coming to the United States over the next few days, bringing another risk of significant severe weather, including damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes. Additionally, a summer heat wave will continue to impact almost the entire country, with brutal record-breaking high temperatures continuing. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today, and we are coming off of a very busy stretch of severe weather yesterday yesterday where we had a bunch of tornadoes in the Midwest and then damaging winds across many areas in the Southeast and as well as the Central and Northern Plains. Right now we have this high pressure system that is sitting back over in the Southeast. Had some big storms though fire right around that yesterday and on top of that these produce significant damaging winds. But further to the north we have this plume of moisture that has been stretching around this high pressure system spin which has been allowing for severe weather to happen in addition to some shortwave troughs that have been moving over the Rockies and we are expecting more significant severe weather today in areas like the Midwest as well. And yesterday we had a ton of severe weather, including 15 tornado reports across areas like southeastern Minnesota, in addition to over 300 wind reports. It was a big day of severe weather yesterday, and unfortunately due to internet issues, I was not able to be live for this event, but we are hoping that those are fixed now and we will be able to be live later today for severe weather coverage. And it does look likely we'll be live both today and tomorrow as we got some big days of severe weather upcoming. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days beginning with today which is Thursday and by the looks of it it might not look like a big day but I think today has the potential to be a day similar to what it was yesterday so right now we have a large marginal threat of severe weather in place that goes from Oklahoma all the way back into the Midwest and the Ohio Valley also into the Southeast I think the main concern across the board today will be damaging winds and hail it should be fairly similar to yesterday just not nearly as widespread when it comes to the threat of severe weather with all that said I do think we are going to see a small maybe localized tornado outbreak again today it's going to come down to storm mode just like yesterday however i do think the chances of us seeing a few tornadoes do appear likely in parts of wisconsin iowa southeast minnesota and extreme northwestern illinois where we may have a couple of rogue supercells so this is an area that we need to keep a very close eye on for later today and assuming we do get tornado warnings we will likely be live on this channel pending no more internet issues so make sure you are subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon down below so you're notified when we do go live this is again the damaging wind risk and then our tornado threat is actually a five percent tornado risk which doesn't encompass areas just to the north of Des Moines and just off to the west of Madison, Wisconsin. And then as we go into Friday, the risk of severe weather will continue to remain elevated in the central and northern plains where we could see a potential for some significant severe weather with very large hail damaging winds and maybe even a strong tornado or two being a possibility. And then back over the mid-Atlantic and the southeast, we have a large marginal threat, which is going to be basically Groundhog Day as compared to yesterday and also what we're going to see today with damaging winds and large hail being a possibility. That will be relatively isolated to widely scattered. So again, main concern across the board, at least for the Northern Plains, will be damaging winds and also the potential for some very large hail. There's also a chance for a couple of tornadoes that, again, could be on the strong side of things. I know we only have a 2% tornado risk right now, but I could easily see this being upgraded in future outlooks. Keep in mind, with today's tornado risk, we did not have a tornado risk outlined by the Storm Prediction Center until this morning's outlook. So it is entirely possible that they will upgrade this further, and I would not even be surprised if for some reason this even got up to a 10% tornado risk at some point down the road. And then going into Saturday, we have another slight risk of severe weather in place across parts of the Northern Plains in the upper Midwest, including the Twin Cities back into central Nebraska, where all hazards of severe weather will be possible, including damaging winds, large hail, and even a potential for a few tornadoes. But I do think very large hail will be the biggest concern on Saturday. And then eventually on Sunday, the threat of severe weather will shift a little further to the east into parts of the Midwest and the Great Lakes region, where all hazards of severe weather will once again be on the table. So here's the timing for severe weather beginning with today, which we are expecting a few storms to be out there this morning. Not really too concerned about these ones, but by around lunchtime is when I think storms are going to begin to ramp up. We may have a cluster or even a broken line of storms ongoing right around and just after lunchtime across central and northern Iowa, and this is going to be mainly for the threat of damaging winds. There will be maybe a little bit of large hail as well. Tornado risk should stay low with this activity, but by around 2 to 3 o'clock is when I think this tornado risk really starts to ramp up, and one area that's being slept on a little bit, which we don't actually have a tornado risk for right now, is back over in central Wisconsin. We may see a discrete supercell or two fire up near a warm frontal boundary, and if that is to happen, we could easily see a tornado or two wouldn't even rule out a potential for a strong tornado. So this is something that we need to keep a very close eye out for out in front of our line of storms. There will also be a potential for an isolated discrete supercell out in front of our cluster slash line by around 3 to 4 o'clock back over in northeast Iowa or even southeast Minnesota. By around 4 to 5, notice how that discrete supercellular activity intensifies back over in central Wisconsin with a noticeable 
updraft helicity track, which means rotation with this storm will definitely be in play. And then multiple other storms up and down central and southern Iowa back into western Wisconsin with the main hazard being damaging winds and a low tornado risk. And then by 6 to 7 o'clock tonight, we got a big cluster moving across Wisconsin and Iowa, very similar to what we saw yesterday with that line of storms that came from behind those discrete supercells that end up producing tornadoes. And then these discrete supercells may continue to pose a tornado threat all the way through 7 to 8 o'clock in Wisconsin. And then I think after sunset, most of these storms will just be producing damaging winds, really not much of a tornado risk as they should become outflow dominant and the instability will also be dying out pretty quickly and there will also be a lot less wind shear after sunset. And then as we go to Friday morning and afternoon, not really expecting much in the Midwest, we'll get a little break on Friday, but severe weather will likely return as we go into Saturday and Sunday. And then if you're back over in the Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic or Southeast, we are expecting a very similar setup to what we had yesterday, but actually a little bit further off to the West where there will be a potential for some isolated downburst damaging winds and large hail. Wouldn't be surprised that an isolated microburst out of one of these storms later today. And then around about 7, 8 o'clock, most of these storms will be falling apart. We'll still have some storms ongoing in Alabama. These ones will actually be mostly moving west with a threat of damaging winds. Not really much of a tornado risk with that activity. And then on Friday, we are looking at a very similar story. Again, just pop-up popcorn storms that will be producing an isolated threat of damaging winds and hail. Tornado risk, again, is very low to zero with any of these storms. And then if you're back over in the northern plains, a couple of storms are possible today back over in northern Montana. But tomorrow will be the big story. I think we're going to be watching for multiple supercells to fire off right around 5, 6, 7 o'clock across the Dakotas, maybe even into western Minnesota. Notice how the Rufus model here does not really initiate anything until about 7 to 8 o'clock, but I wouldn't be surprised if these storms began a little bit further back off to the west. But the biggest concern with any of these storms that form will be very large hail and damaging winds. If any storm stay discrete like this model is showing, we very easily could see a tornado and it could even be on the stronger side of things. By around and just after midnight, we should start to see these storms congeal into a line of storms or at least a cluster with damaging winds being a more elevated concern in western Minnesota and then that'll fall apart as it gets closer to the Twin Cities during the early morning on Saturday. And then back over in the Midwest for Saturday, we are expecting multiple storms to fire up right around the mid to late afternoon and early evening back over around and just to the south and west there of the Twin Cities. Biggest concern with these will be damaging winds and very large hail up to the size of baseballs will be possible. There's also a chance for a tornado or two if any of these storms can stay discreet. Right now the Rufus model shows those storms lasting right until about 2 to 3 in the morning, but the most severe of this part will be up until about 10 to 11 o'clock on Saturday. And then in terms of our future, beyond Friday, Saturday, and even Sunday of this weekend, we are expecting this active weather pattern to continue across the northern plains in the Midwest, with isolated to scattered severe weather being a possibility. I do think Sunday has the potential to be a little bit more scattered to numerous across the central plains in the Midwest, so that is a day that we need to keep an eye on. And then by Monday and Tuesday is when I think things start to quiet down quite a bit. We'll probably still have severe weather out there. We may have some isolated damaging winds, hail, maybe a low tornado risk on Monday across the central and southern plains back into the Ozarks. But I think overall, our high pressure is going to build here in the Great Plains, and this is going to prevent a lot of our big, severe weather events from taking place. So I think just before and around the 4th of July, we are talking about at least a slightly more quiet weather pattern. But by around and just after the 4th of July is when I think severe weather will return across parts of the Midwest, maybe even the Ohio Valley and also the northern plains. So get ready for that. At least we got a little break, I think, coming up here. It's still going to we're still going to have severe weather, just at least will not be nearly as significant as what we've seen here over the last few weeks. Also, this is pretty crazy, but these are the preliminary record-breaking high temperatures that we've had between June 22nd to 24th. All the red dots indicating record-breaking high temperatures were at least observed on one of these days, and literally almost anywhere in the Midwest, Ohio Valley, or Northeast had a record-breaking daily high temperature. So crazy stuff here. Obviously, we are expecting more heat over the next few weeks, and I do think we're going to continue to see a heat wave. Record-breaking high temperatures still remain a possibility in areas like the Midwest and the Northeast as we go into this upcoming weekend so be ready for that and as always thank you all so much for watching today's forecast if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe down below as i've already mentioned there is a pretty good chance we'll be live today if not tomorrow so make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if and when we do go live and also again big apologies for not being live yesterday i it was again out of my control we literally spent a ton of money getting a starlink rushing to set it up and unfortunately it was just not enough to stay live for long enough so i do apologize once we have our new studio which is hopefully going to be in the next week or two we will be able to have internet almost all the time like there will literally be almost no interruptions so we're really hopeful for that here in the next couple weeks but aside from that hopefully this issue does not happen again at least within the next two weeks thank you all again so much for watching we'll see you guys all again in the next video or live stream